Joining us now to discuss safety concerns regarding the 10 freeway is Dr. Yasser Salam, a professor and the department chair of civil engineering at Cal Poly Pomona. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Um, can you tell us about the repair process as we just saw those braces going up already, but there will be challenges, I'm assuming, faced by Caltrans engineers through this process. Yeah, sure. Good morning. Um, yeah, the first step, as you can, uh, you know, uh, see from the footage, is to brace uh, uh, the deck of the bridge and transfer the load safely to the foundation. And looks like Caltrans already um, started the process. And uh, the encouraging news is, uh, from what we hear from the governor and, and Caltrans engineer, the damage appears to be localized with the columns, the deck, and the foundations. From what I heard this morning, seems to be. Um, in in not severely damaged for from from the from the fire, uh, Caltrans is one of the finest uh, transportation authority in the world. Uh, people all over the world look at Caltrans for technology and advancement. So um, Caltrans has the technology and the know-how to handle a case like this. And I do remember in the Northridge earthquake, the 22 freeway um, was completely demolished and rebuilt in in less than four weeks, and mm. that was. Well, that was quite a challenge by itself. So um, uh, I'm very optimistic about Caltrans and our contractors' ability to bring this back um, into surface very, very soon. Yeah, luckily uh, it's not completely unfamiliar to these workers, the, the mayor talking about how some of the same workers are on this job as well. What does it actually involve when it comes to assessing the damage and, and what's involved with that work? Right, so there is like three steps or three phases when, with damage assessment. The first one is what we call visual inspection and you, you know, an engineer will walk the bridge and um, look at um, um, you know, signs of distress. And I'm assuming that's already been done right after the incident. Then the second phase or the second step is to conduct what we call um, in, in our world is non-destructive testing. You know, engineers use props to, to measure the, uh, the compressive strength of concrete and the rebars and use radars and ultrasonic and things like this. And I would, I would assume also part of that was done uh, between yesterday and today. Then the third phase is to extract samples from, from the concrete and from the reinforcement steels and take them to the lab to determine the strengths of uh, the structural components of the bridge after the fire. And uh, based on these three different phases, it, you know, uh, Caltrans engineers will have a very clear idea about the condition of the bridge as of right now and how much needs to be done to bring it back to surface. You know, the governor's saying three to five weeks. He's saying he doesn't want it to take the full five weeks. Is three weeks realistic, in your opinion? I think so. If if the repairs um, focus only around the columns and replacing the columns, which look which which it looks like it from, from from the footage that you showed earlier, because it looks like they're trying to shore up the bridge to transfer the load away from the column to the temporary shoring, then I'd imagine the next step is to um, remove or retrofit these columns. And once this is done, the bridge can get back to surface. Mm -hmm. So three, four weeks is is very realistic estimate to bring it back. It's, considering the technology and the experience that we have here in, in the state. Great. Well, that is a little good news this <laughs> morning. Dr. Yasser Salam, thanks so much for joining us. And be sure to stay with KCAL News Mornings for the very latest developments on the 10 freeway closure. We're also streaming 24-7 on CBS News Los Angeles.